Hey there, Touch Designer developers, Jack Delora here with the Interactive and Immersive HQ. In this video, we're going to look at recreating a work of Solowitz artwork uh, within Touch Designer. This is an artwork called Bars of Color Within a Square from 2002, and it is actually a wall painting of Solowitz. Now, Solowitz was a very interesting artist in that he would often create instructions to generate his pieces of work instead of, say, exhibiting like a finished painting or something like that. So a lot of his works are painted directly on the wall uh, based on instructions that he has given. Um, and this piece of art is no different. Um, so we're going to approach this once again via using 3D geometry and an isometric camera. The series of artworks that Solowit was working on during this time period all deal with isometric forms in one way or another. So I thought it'd be a great example of how we can once again work with the isometric camera. And we're also going to look at how we can add color in this very specific way to the different sides of our geometry like the original painting has. If you're not familiar with Solowit's work already, I would highly recommend heading over to massmocha.org. Massmocha is a really great um, Museum of Contemporary Art in Massachusetts, and they currently have a really uh, very thorough retrospective of Solowitz wall art on display. And you can head over to their website, massmocha.org slash sol and take a look at a bunch of different uh, compositions that um, Solowitz created over the years that have all been recreated at the museum. And if you scroll way down until you hit um, wall drawing 1037, you can actually find the piece of art that we're going to be recreating today. And this will give you some information about the artwork itself and the kind of general concepts that uh, Solowit was working with in 2002 when he created this series of artworks. So that should give you a little bit more context about the piece of art and Solowit's work in general. So as I mentioned just a moment ago, we're going to work with 3D geometry to build uh, this particular artwork. And we're going to begin with a box sob. So we're going to make some adjustments here to the size as well as the positioning and the scale. Let's begin by setting the scale here to 0 0.5. Then come up to the size parameter. I'm gonna set the size X to 1.24 and the size Y to 1.27. Then I'm gonna head down to the center X parameter, which I'm going to set to 0 0.09. And then in center Y, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.25. Great, so this will be the kind of top portion of that upside down T shape that we see in the original artwork. In uh, or following that, we're going to add an additional box stop, which will act as the kind of bottom part of that geometry. So in this case, we're going to once again set the scale here to 0 0.5. Then I'm going to adjust the size to a value of five. Then I'm going to, or that was size X, and then for size Y, I'm going to set that to 0 0.87. We'll come down to center X, which I'm going to set to negative 0 0.31. And then for the center Y, I'm going to set that to negative 0 0.25. Great, so we've got those both set up, and now we're going to use a Boolean SOP to combine those into a single piece of geometry. So I'm going to connect box one to the first input and box two to the second input, and we should see a shape that doesn't look exactly like what we saw in Solowit's art, but uh, with the isometric camera and a little bit of adjustments, we'll actually be able to use this for generating that artwork. Um, so then what we're going to do is to get that kind of uh, angle or that isometric angle that uh, we see in the original and to make things kind of line up and look like Solowit's artwork, we're actually going to grab the points that are making up the back of this shape. So like the back side of the shape specifically. And we're going to shift those slightly in space so that it looks more um, aligned with the original artwork in our final rendered output. So to do that, I'm going to add a group SOP, and we're going to use that to specifically select the points that we want. In the group SOP, we're going to leave the group name alone, but we're actually going to change the entity here from primitives to points. 
because specifically we're going to want to shift this back face, all of the points that make up that back face in space and kind of distort this shape a little bit. So let's then come to the create page where we're going to turn on bounds and use this bounding box to select the specific points that we want to adjust. So here within the bounding box size and center parameters, we're going to make some adjustments. Uh, first of all, we want to, again, only select those points on this back face. And so our X uh, size parameter needs to be a little bit bigger to encompass our entire shape. So I'm gonna set my size X here to four and then gonna set my size Y to 1.6. And then I'm gonna set my size Z. I need to actually reduce that because right now we're selecting the entire shape. We only want the back uh, set of points. So I'm gonna set that to 0 0.1. Once I've done that, we're actually aligned currently with the X axis. So we're not actually selecting any points because we don't have any points on the X axis. So I need to shift the Z position of this bounding box as well. So I'm gonna to come to the center Z parameter and set that to negative 0.25. Once that has been done, we should see that all of the points on this backside of the shape have been selected and should be highlighted in yellow. Now that we've done that, we can actually use a transform SOP to specifically adjust or move, transform those points. So let's add the transform SOP. Within the transform SOP, we need to specify that we only want to adjust that particular group of points. So in the group parameter, I'm gonna click the drop down on the right and hit group one. Then we can actually adjust those points specifically. So I'm going to, in the translate X parameter, enter negative 0.035, which will shift it a little bit to the left. And then I'm going to enter 0.36 in the Y translate parameter, which will shift it up. With that, we should see we have a, a more distorted version of that shape. And again, because we're going to be using an orthographic camera, this will uh, work out to give us that particular uh, upside down T shape that we saw in the original painting. So we have our geometry completed and we can now work on adding our geometry comp, our camera, our rendering pipeline. And interestingly, we're going to use lights in this case to actually um, apply the color that was in the original painting to this shape. So let's begin by adding the geo comp and the material and the camera, and then we'll work on the lighting. So I'm gonna right click on the output of this transform and I guess we can add a null just for good measure in case you want to do any additional adjustments. And then I'm going to add a geo comp. Great. Then uh, let's go ahead and add a material. We're gonna use a fong in this case. Um, we're going to then drag the fong onto the geo comp and hit parameter material. And then we just have to make a couple of adjustments within the fong. Um, Let's click on the fong. We want the diffuse color to be set to one. So I'm gonna middle mouse click on the diffuse title and then use the value ladder to make sure that we have ones for the R, G, and B values there. For the specular color, I'm going to set that value to zero. We're all set within the fong. Let's go ahead and add a render first so we can see our output and then I'm going to add the camera so we can see again how that's affecting the output. So let's head back to the top page, grab a render. It's giving us a warning because we don't have a camera, that's okay. Um, before we move on actually, let's set within the render top. We want to use a square resolution because we uh, had our original painting was in a square aspect ratio. We're gonna use 1024 by 1024 in this case and auto resize that. We're all good to go there. Uh, let's go ahead and add the camera now. So I'm gonna head back to the comp page, add the camera, and we can see without lighting, our shape is black, that's okay. But I wanted to at least show you uh, kind of how the positioning and the orthographic mode on our camera is going to change the view that we see. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is head to the 
view page and set the projection here from perspective to orthographic. That has the effect, which we can see better in our camera uh, viewer specifically, of giving us an orthographic view of our shape. Now we're going to use the transform controls to adjust it so that it looks a little bit more uh, close to what we saw in the original painting. So I'm gonna use the translate and the rotate uh, parameters to adjust this. So for the translate X, let's set that to 5.13. Then for the translate Y, 0 0.2. And then I'm going to rotate in the Y axis, 45 degrees. Then we should see our shape appear in a very similar composition to Solowitz's painting. Hey there, sorry to pause the video, but I wanted to share something with you really quickly. Right now you can get 50% off the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only community and educational resource of its kind to comprehensively support touch designer developers and artists. We have over 120 hours of video trainings and courses, a private community where you can ask any question to myself and Matthew Reagan, and those get answered every day, as well as the first and only certification program for touch designer developers and artists. If this sounds interesting, click the link in the description below to learn more about the interactive and immersive HQ Pro and join for 50% off. Offer ends May 31st. So we have a shape, it's appearing in our output, but obviously we have no color applied to that shape. So we're going to approach this using lighting in this case because it's a very simple and effective way to achieve the look that the original uh, painting had uh, without having to get too complicated with texturing. Um, and especially in these cases where we're using solid colors at very specific directions, uh, it can be a super simple and effective way of achieving that. So let's begin with a light. We're gonna have three lights because we have three different colors that are applied to this piece of geometry. So this first light, we're going to uh, set our translate Y parameter to five. And this is actually going to be our yellow color. So I'm gonna rename this light to light space Y. Then in the light page, or on the light page, I'm gonna set the light color here to that yellow color. So for the red color parameter, I'm going to type in 0.93. For the green parameter, I'm gonna type in 0 0.77. And then for the blue parameter, I'm gonna type in zero. That should give us that yellow color. We can then copy and paste that for our next light, which is going to be our green light. I'm gonna rename this to light G. And I want this to be applied to the top uh, sides of this shape. So. This is a point light, so we don't have to actually specifically rotate the light in that direction, but if we move via the translate parameters, the position, it will shine on top of the shape. So what we're gonna do is adjust this translate parameter first. I'm gonna set the translate Y here to five and the translate Z to zero. That will give us the effect of making the top of the shape now yellow as well. Let's then come to the light page and change the color to green. So for the red channel, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.15. The green channel, I'm gonna to set to 0 0.55. And the blue channel, I'm gonna to set to 0 0.16. Great, so we have two out of the three colors. And then I'm going to add, copy and paste this one more time. Uh, let's do that again. This is going to be our blue light. So here I'm gonna rename that to blue. Again, we're going to use the translate parameters to um, specifically aim that at the sides of the shape that we want. I'm going to set my translate Z or Y rather here to zero and I want the translate X to be five. Great, so that's uh, had the effect of the right sides of that shape are now lit with the green light as well. Let's head to the light page and change the color. So for the red channel, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.14. For the green channel, I'm gonna set that to 0 0.38. And finally, for the blue channel, I'm gonna set this to 0 0.62. So we now have, with a very simple adjustment of just a couple of lights, the same effect that we saw in the painting uh, applied to this shape.
So hopefully that gives you an idea of how lights can be super useful for adding color to geometry. So now that we've done that, um, you might remember that the, you know, the shape didn't just sort of float in space on a transparent background like this. We had some outer squares that bounded that shape, gave it kind of a frame and also a background behind it. So we're going to use uh, rectangle tops for those kind of outlined frames. And then we're going to use a constant for the background. So let's begin by adding a rectangle top. So far, so good. It has uh, gotten rid of our uh, composition, which is okay. We're going to make some adjustments and have that reappear momentarily. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is come to the size parameter and I want to set the unit here to pixels. We're going to be working with pixels just because it's very easy to specify the exact dimensions of the um, ring or the, the kind of outer bounding square that we're adding here uh, with pixel units. I'm going to set the size here to 912 by 912. Then I'm going to come down to fill alpha and turn that to zero. We're going to be using the border in this case to add that kind of ring. And we also want to set the border color here to be red. So this is going to be the inner ring. The inner ring was red and the outer ring was a purple color. So for the border color, I'm going to set a value of 0 0.65 for the red channel, 0 0.09 oops, for the green channel and 0 0.09 for the blue channel as well. Then I'm going to come down to the border width and once again set the unit here to pixel. I'm going to set the border width to 56 pixels, which ha should have the effect of that appearing on screen. Now another important thing that I'm going to do here is turn anti-aliasing off. Then I'm going to come to the output page because we want to actually composite this, uh, our original, you know, 3D geometry with this ring. And we're going to do that with the comp with input switch. We're going to keep it at the over uh, operation. And with that, we are all good to go with that shape. I'm going to copy and paste that because we're going to use the same kind of setup for our second uh, ring, which is going to be purple. Make sure when you do that, that you then connect the output of the first rectangle to the input of the second rectangle so that we can make sure to have both of those in our output. Let's come back to the rectangle page. I'm going to set the size here to 1024 by 1024, which should give us now a solid border with no transparency. And then all we have to do here is just correctly set our border color. So for the red channel, I'm going to set 0.29. I'm going to set 0.2 for the green channel and 0.41 for the blue channel. That should give us that purple color. Finally, I'm going to use a constant to apply a background. So we're going to attach the constant, set the color, and then composite. So the color in this case is a, a kind of burnt orange color. And in the red channel, we have a value of 0.92. Green channel is 0 0.24 and the blue channel is 0 0.09. Let's then comp with input. And in this case, we want to use a value of under for the operation. With that, we have finished our recreation of Solowitz art. So if you take a look at the viewer here, you should see something that looks pretty close to that original painting. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can once again work with the orthographic camera to create this interesting uh, minimalist um, geometric artwork, as well as how lights can be a super useful and fast way of adding color to this kind of simple geometry. Obviously, you can take this further by experimenting with colors of your own and uh, different geometry. There's a ton of opportunities there with the orthographic camera to make some really interesting compositions. And definitely check out that Mass Mocha website uh, to get further inspiration from Solowitz's work for creating this kind of stuff. Um, he has tons of different isometric compositions that can give you some inspiration for working with SOPs and creating some of your own. So with that, we're going to close out the video. Hope you have enjoyed putting this together. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video here on the Interactive and Immersive HQ. Hey folks, thanks for watching. As I mentioned earlier, you can get 50% off the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. 
The HQ Pro is the only community and educational resource of its kind to comprehensively support touch designer developers and artists. We have over 120 hours of video trainings and courses, a private community where you can ask any question to myself and Matthew Reagan, and those get answered every day, as well as the first and only certification program for touch designer developers and artists. If this sounds interesting, click the link in the description below to learn more about the interactive and immersive HQ Pro and join for 50% off. Offer ends May 31st.